Good morning guys and girls, ladies and gents. Our subject for today is uh, our history one and our lesson number six is about the Karyatid and the Atlantis figures. Or to make it easier to understand those figures, th this male and female figure like this one represents a column in Greek architecture but more of aesthetics aesthetically designed column alright so magstart muna tayo sa Atlantis or Atlas pag isang figure lang pag isang figure that is called Atlas si Atlas lang yan at kung marami sila plural of that is Atlantis. So, Atlantis ang plural ng ganitong klaseng column in Greek architecture. Alright, so don't forget it. Atlas, pag singular, pag isang puste lang, nagawa sa tao, nahugis tao, purmang tao, at Atlantis kung ito ay marami na. Ang Atlas or Atlantis Column in Greek architecture ay parang decorative lang ito siya. Hindi ganong matibay tulad ng Doric, Ionic or Corinthian. Kasi aesthetic na siya, hindi na solid. Halimbawa dito, meron ng subtractive elements. Yung nabawasan na yung tibay ng bato. Ganon din dito sa gilid. So, ang main purpose ng Atlas figure ay more on aesthetics, more on art compared to the strength of the building. Kaya nilalagay lang ito sa yung minor lang, yung bigat ng parte ng building tulad dito. Nasa canopy lang siya nilagay. Kasi ang canopy ay or porch sa example na ito na sa porch siya sa second floor hindi naman kasi ganong mabigat ang load ng porch kaya pwede siya doon itong karyatid naman ay rows of column na female figure na walang mga braso walang kamay, walang braso ulo lang na merong basket at yung basket ang nag-serve na abacus or your, yung load-bearing capital tulad ng Doric, Ionic. Meron silang abacus na doon ipinatong yung beam na yun ang, yun ang nagkarga ng beam at load-bearing ang mga poste na karyatid. Meron silang function. Yung perch ay kaya nila yan. Kaya nilang suportahan ang bigat ng perch. Kaya marami sila in a rows pag gumawa ng karyatid columns. Meron tayong isang example dito ng tingnan natin itong Atlantis. By definition, Atlas, ang plural niya ay Atlantis. In architecture, that is male figure used as a column to support an entablature. Ano ba yung entablature? Yun yung parang biranda yung sa itaas. Yung nakapatong lahat sa beam, yun ang entablature. Na-discuss na natin yan in our last lesson kung ano yung part of orders sa, ibab sa ibabaw nun, sa ibabaw ng abacus, yun ang beam hanggang sa raking cornice yung ang yun ang tinatawag na entablature. Mabigat ang entablature kaya kailangan niya ng support na maraming poste. The Atlas or Atlantis figure originate in the classical architecture of antiquity. Such figures are posed as if supporting great weights the related telamon of Roman architecture, the male counterpart, 
Obed is the Karyatid. He's also a weight-bearing figure but does not usually appear in Atlas pose. Itong si Atlas, ito yung pinakamalakas na tao sa Greek mythology na ayon sa alamat ay siya yung nagpasan ng ating daigdig hanggang sa ngayon. Maniwala ba kayo? Ito siya, si Atlas. Na hanggang sa ngayon ay pinapasan ba daw niya ang ating Earth? Salamat naman kay Atlas. Okay, punta tayo sa Karyatid. Hang on for a while. Okay, here we go guys with the Karyatid form of female sculpted column. By definition, a Karyatid is a sculpt female figure serving as an architectural support just like a column taking the place of a column or a pillar supporting an entablature on her head the Greek term karyatides literally means maidens or the karyai ang ibig sabihin ay babae an ancient town of Peloponnes karyai had a famous temple dedicated to the goddess Artemis and her aspect of Artemis Karyatis. As a Karyatis, she rejoices in the dances of the Natri village of Karyai, those Karyatides, who in their ecstatic round dance carried on their heads baskets of live reeds as if they were dancing plants. We will be focusing on this one, the Karyatid ports of the Erection on the Acropolis at Athens. Okay. It is located on the north side, also called the Porch of the Maidens, with six drape, each sculpted in a manner different from rest, and engineered in such a way that their slenderness part, the neck, is capable of supporting the weight of the Porch while remaining graceful and feminine. Ibig sabihin ng anim daw na ito, na famous karyatid hanggang sa ngayon ay nag-exist pa yan kasi load bearing talaga sila kaya nila bumuhat ng mabigat in this case yung porch ang binuhat nila anim sila na magkaiba-iba daw ang kanilang karakter ang itsura ang expression niyan ay iba-iba hindi yan yung tinatawag na fabricated na iisa lang ang mukha at iisa lang ang katawan ang Pagkagawa niyan, example tong drapery, itong damit nila, ang posisyon ng mga tuhod ay medyo magkakaiba yan. Ang damit ay magkakaiba yung fold, ang smile, ang kilay, ang ilong, magkakaiba, ang mata. Talagang ginawa yan isa-isa and that is work of an art. Not only an art, but a great, a great art of the Greek civilization the classical period that is the time where the classical architecture and the classical art flourished all over the world during the time of Michelangelo and Da Vinci that's the time of the high renaissance the high classical period ano bang taon nag-exist si Michelangelo at si Da Vinci Well, sa Renaissance, around 14th century AD ang start ng Renaissance. At nagtapos ang High Renaissance around 17th century AD. Ito yung close-up ng mga karyatid figures. Kung tingnan natin, ay magkaiba talaga. Pati buhok nila ay magkaiba. Yung ilong pati yung drapery, yung pagka-fold ng mga damit ay magkaiba yan. Kung tingnan mo, hindi talaga sila pareho. Kasi ang mga post on or column ay hindi pa fabricated. Hindi tulad ngayon na ang column ay hinulma lang, fabricated na, at pare-pareho na sila. Noon, kada isa niyan ay mahal yan. Kasi antik na yan, historical antik, at gawa yan ng tao, man-made, kinakarve yan ng magaling na carver noong Renaissance. Uh, 
around 420 BC. That's uh, the beginning of the classical period. Ang mga mata daw ng karyatid are slightly oversized. Medyo nilakihan daw. And then nawala yung smile, parang Mona Lisa. Yung mga smile ng karyatid. Hindi malakas ang dating. Parang mysterious, enigmatic smile. Parang Mona Lisa nga kasi Renaissance. Ang archaic period, yan ang pinagkaunang sibilisasyon sa Greece na gumagawa na rin ng mga carvings made of marble stones. Magaling na sila noon sa archaic period na produce na yung Doric entablature, Doric capital at Doric order. Doon yung ginawa sa archaic period. Kaya mayroon ng architecture sa archaic. After archaic period ay renaissance na. At yun ang panahon nila Michelangelo at Da Vinci. Woodford Drapery. Ito yung drapery ng... Kung tingnan nyo yung damit ng mga karyatid ay dito. Iba-iba ang fold. Although magkapariho yung purma ng damit, saka ang pagka-braid ng buhok, pero iba-iba ang kung tingnan ay may pagkakaiba talaga sila. Meaning to say, hindi yan hinulma, hindi fabricated, inisa-isa paggawa ang mga karyatid. Okay, so hanggang dito lang muna. Don't forget our topic for today. That's the Atlantis or the Atlas and the karyatid load-bearing sculpture of male and female. At the end of this video, there will be questions to answer. And alam nyo na ang gawin. Ipunin nyo ang inyong mga papel at ilagay yan sa brown envelope. Until then, kita kita kids sa uh, next video. Uh, that will be lesson number 7. And here's the questions for you guys to answer and compile it on your brown envelope. Uh, question number one, what is karyatid? Number two, a series of six karyatid support ports on one of the buildings on the Acropolis, Athens. What is the name of the structure? Just select the best answer in the four circle below the questions. And number four question is, who is Atlas in Greek mythology? What is the purpose of Atlas in Greek architecture? Alright, so don't forget to subscribe, click and like to be notified on your Android phone. I'll see you on our lesson number seven. That's gonna be Roman architecture. So, goodbye for now guys.